See, Jesus said the kingdom doesn't come with observation like it's over there or over there, but the kingdom of God is inside of you. It's where the king dominates, the king's dominion. It's where he dominates. Does he dominate your affections? Does he dominate your heart? Does, does, does he, are you on fire? Are you in love with God? Is, are, our God is an all-consuming fire, and he's a jealous God. He's not willing that you have any other lovers, but are you on fire for God? Does he dominate your thoughts? Does he dominate your emotions? Because that's when the kingdom comes. Is when it comes inside of you, and then it manifests outside of you. And so I don't see the kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven unless somebody gets born again unless people get born again so I want to see as many people get saved as possible so I began to dream about it I would listen to Reinhard Bonnke at night fall asleep listening to him preach the gospel at night I would listen to him and then I would just dream in my bed about preaching the gospel to the masses and to the one and I would allow the Holy Spirit to train me in the night seasons. I feel like that God wants us to grow in our understanding of what does it mean to be born again so that when we begin to activate the gifts of the Spirit, we not only are activating the gifts of the Spirit, but we're willing and ready to preach the gospel at all times. And it doesn't matter the results. It just matters that you're being obedient to the Great Commission. How many people know that the Great Commission is not the Great Suggestion? It's the commandment of God, and those who love me will obey my commandments. And evangelism is not just for the evangelist. Some people say, you're going to do the evangelist, evangelism because you're the evangelist, Richie. I'm not an evangelist. It's not my gift. I'm not going to do the evangelism. But the reality of the fact is, is that the fivefold ministry is given to equip the saints for the work of ministry. So if you call me an evangelist, then my job is to equip you to do the work of ministry. It's the saints who do the work of ministry. Come on. It doesn't say these signs in Mark 16 will follow, you know, the, the evangelist. These signs will follow the prophet. These signs will follow the apostle. These signs will follow the guy with the microphone or the bold guy. It says these signs will follow those who believe. So the qualification for seeing these signs is that you believe. The question is, do you believe? If you're a believer in Jesus, then these signs follow you. Come on, they're meant for every believer. Thank you, Jesus. I got eight minutes. There's a cost of putting your light under a basket of fear. Fire always falls on acceptable sacrifice, but the only acceptable sacrifice is a life that's laid down in love. You are the sacrifice. You are the sacrifice. No greater love than this than a man laid down his life for his friends. Jesus Christ Gave us the commandment. This, this is the commandment that I give you. If you obey my commandments and you'll abide in my love just as I abide in my Father's love and you'll bear much fruit. The commandment is to lay down our life for one another. Love looks like something. It looks like laying down your life. Had a young man named Richard Miranda that I was uh, discipling in YWAM. And uh, he came from a rough background, gang members uh, in his family. Um, mom, a drug addict. Dad, in and out of jail poor, came home, watched his mom OD on, on, on drugs because she stole his PlayStation at Christmas. She's ODing. He calls the cops, calls his, his, uh, his family members that were in the gangs. He's crying in the corner. His brothers get there before the paramedics get there. They say, stop crying, get up and get out of here. They want to get him out before the authorities come and take him and put him in foster care. He can't quit crying, so they beat him up. Man up! This is what life is. Man up. He decides on that day he'll never cry again. Fast forward. He's in my, I'm discipling him. And why when the Holy Spirit starts moving, some people are over here rolling around on the ground and laughing. Some people are crying. And here's Richard in the corner. <clears throat> I'm like, that's a weird manifestation right there. <laughs> I said, I see some weird stuff. That's weird, man. I let him do it for about two days. I go up to him. I say, hey, man, is that the Holy Spirit manifestation on you, man? Why are you doing that? He said, no, this is how I stop my tears, man. He tells me the story I just told you. I bring him into the bathroom, put him in front of a mirror. I said, look at yourself in the mirror. And I read him the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Then I read to him how the Apostle Paul with many tears wept. Then I began to declare his identity. And then I began to do something I learned from Graham Cook. He loves you. And I'm going to say this over you. He loves you because 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 he loves you. 
because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you. He loves you just because he loves you, just because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you, just because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you. He's always going to love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And he goes from never crying that day, he just starts weeping and crying. He goes from the guy who never cries to the guy who always cries. You know what I'm talking about? You could just mention the name of Jesus and they're like, ha, ha, ha. My best student, seriously, he would lead this kind of conference. He'd go to the streets. He'd lead about three or four people to Jesus. He'd bring them and all their friends to the conference. The whole school was going up fast because he's a leader and he's on fire for God and he's going for it until about two weeks from the end of the school he starts rebelling he starts touching girls in wrong places he starts staying out past curfew he starts doing anything he can do in order to get in trouble and I keep giving him warning after warning he's my favorite student my gotten into my heart before I ever met him I was reading his application and I'm warning him and warning him and warning him but he's taking the whole students down we're supposed to be climaxing for the end of the uh the, the class and we're going to send them back to their parents and then we're going to send them to the high schools to win their high schools for Jesus and instead they're going to send them back worse because of Richard so I go to the other leader I say I'm going to have to send him home it's breaking my heart I'm going to have to send him home enough is enough for the sake of everybody else I'll send him home I'm so glad for Nick's because she had the heart of God that day the heart of the father she said no nah, just one more chance that's, that's the heart of the father no, just one more chance. I, the disciple said to Jesus, how many times do we got to forgive? Jesus says seven times 70. In other words, until it's complete. And this is next, just one more chance, just one more chance. No, no, enough is enough. I'm not, I don't want to empower him. No, 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 just one more chance. The father said, no, just one more chance. The mercy of God is offensive to a lot of people. How many chances do I got to give? No, another chance. Love never fails we got to understand our mission. See, Jesus was the disciples' advantage. When he, when he said, listen, you guys are sad because I say I'm going away, but I'm telling you it's to your advantage that I go away. Listen, he was a great advantage to their life. Jesus, imagine being the disciples. How many people think Jesus was a great advantage in their life? I mean, I would be sad too. How many people think that seeing somebody raised from the dead and seeing somebody walk on the water and multiplying food and turning water into wine would be an advantage to your faith? I mean, major advantage to your faith. And he's giving them a hard time for being sad because he says, I'm going away. But listen, he was an advantage to their life. When you get to heaven, just ask the sons of thunder one time about the time they were going through the town of Samaria. And they're going through the town of Samaria and nobody's being hospitable. So they go to Jesus and they say to Jesus, hey, you want us to call down fire from heaven like Elijah did? Listen, they understood their authority. They didn't say, do you want to call down fire? They said, you want us to call down fire. I don't even think I know any Christians that actually believe they can call down fire on a city and it actually happened. And that's probably a good thing. We wouldn't have New York or California or, you know, New Orleans or anywhere. I mean, they would be burned up by now. Listen, they understood their authority. They understood the word of God. Like Elijah did, listen, there's precedence in the Bible. They understood the word. They understood their authority. One thing they were missing, though, luckily Jesus was with them as their advantage. Nah, boys, not a good idea. You don't know what spirit you're of. For the Son of Man didn't come to what? Kill men's lives. He came to what? Save men's lives. What I was talking about yesterday, do you see the 18 felon kid in a juvenile hall that's fighting and beating and sleeping around? Or do you see the evangelist on the stage redeemed and set free? Do you see the one that for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross while they're gambling over his clothes, beating him, marring beyond recognition? He says, no man's taking my life for me. I'm giving it up freely. Do you see that? Do you, what do you see? See, Richard, I go to him because she said, just give him one more chance. Give him one more chance. Understanding what spirit you are. The son of man didn't come to kill men's life, to save men's life. I go to Richard. I say, man, I walk down in the basement. I say, I'm going to give you another chance. I walk down. I say, hey, man, why are you doing this, man? I love you. He said, I don't even know what love is. 
You say you love me. You say God loves me. I don't even know what love is. I'm so glad for my advantage in that day, the Holy Spirit, because I explode right back in his face. I say, Richard, there's a gun right here. One of those gangbangers has this gun. They say, you're going to take the bullet or I'm going to take the bullet. You get to choose. Who's taking the bullet, Richard? You get to choose. And with tears running down his face, he said, Richie, I'd take that bullet for you. I said, don't you dare tell me you don't know what love is. You just love me. Love looks like something. It looks like a man hanging on a cross. No man takes my life from me. If I want, I could get legions of angels to come to my defense. But for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. What spirit are we partnering with? Is it the spirit of reconciliation? The spirit of God that was in Jesus reconciling the world to himself, not counting their sins against them. What spirit are we moving in? Hey, I'm so excited that we're doing the stirring again. I'm, I'm going to be with my good friends, Paul Martini and John Prudian. Uh, we've done stirrings all over the United States. We've seen countless miracles take place, um, pe- metal dissolving in people's body, tumors dissolving, people being healed of autoimmune diseases and cancer. We've seen hundreds of people saved, if not thousands of people saved. So many people equipped and trained, you know, the stirring um, was named by Paul Martini as he was praying and asking uh, the Holy Spirit, what, what conference do you want me to start? And the Lord says, you know, so many people have done so many uh, and gone to so many conferences and schools. They've, they've got a lot of giftings. They've got a lot of prophetic words. What they need to do is stir up the gift of God that's already been given to them through the laying on of hands. And so the stirring is all about personal ministry. It's about stirring up those giftings. And yes, you'll get more prophetic words. And yes, you'll get a lot of impartation. We've specifically structured the stirrings to have longer times of ministry. So there'll be training. um, There'll be long worship and, and long times of ministry just to minister to you and your family. And so I want to invite you to come. Be a part of the stirring. Let's get stirred up together and see Jesus get his full reward. Thank you.